Oh, hey folks, how you doing? Uh, it's Paul, and uh, we're going to have a funny one today. It's uh, unintentionally funny, but um, I feel like I've got to share it with you because <clears throat> where one should be slitting their wrists, I somehow seem to <clears throat> um, not exactly embellish the thought, but <clears throat> I seem to be able to roll with the punches. You know, like when you're a little kid and um, like something happens and you get beat up in front of some people or whatever, or whatever the situation is, or you make a mistake and you're embarrassed in front of a lot of people, or you get caught shoplifting or something like that. You know, like something where it, it's not good. When you're a child, the mind seems to keep uh, allowing you to keep going without focusing too much. And to be honest with you, <clears throat> I mean, that's what probably suicide is all about. Don't worry, this won't be a suicide video. I, I promise you. Uh, but, I mean, it's sad because, you know, all the movies that I've watched, and, I mean, I've watched good movies, not Kill Bill and all the rest of this garbage, uh, and Top Flight with uh, Maverick and all, and all that garbage. Oh, that was a great movie. I know. It's a psych op, folks. It's, this is the New World Order channel. You must understand. Uh, anyway, so, you know, when you're a kid, that kind of protects you. You know what I mean? And you kind of like, you just kind of like keep going. At least that's what we did when we were young. And I know a lot of kids that do that. And today that kind of happened to me. And it kind of happened to me in spades. And it kind of, it kind of got me on my Achilles heel. And um, I didn't want to talk about this because um, I, I am no longer able to be friends with my ex-friend. Um, he, um, I, I, and I don't like talking about him. Uh, he was good to me to some, some degree. He was good to me. And um, I think, honestly, he really tried as much as he could uh, to understand me. And I just don't think that I'm easily understood. Um, and, you know, there are certain things that go, uh, against, you know, the, the genes, uh, the gene type of personality of the person. And, um, you know, I, 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 all I'm telling you here is something happened today and I should be very depressed about it and all this kind of stuff and giving up and everything. But... <clears throat> The day is almost over, and it's pretty much over now. And I, I just, uh, I, I, I feel like a, a little bit of pride. I feel like I, I'm proud of myself uh, as much as a person in my situation can be. And, um, well, I won't get into the whole thing, but... Uh, my Achilles heel is that I have a difficult time in keeping myself and my surroundings uh, human clean. Now, I mean, you could be like ant clean or like um, a stray cat clean. You know what I mean? And um, it's kind of hard here for me because, you know, I've got a wife and a kid and I do my best to... Uh, to support them on the menial amount of money that I make right now. So, I mean, I, I do the best I can. And I think everybody will respect that as much as one to another won't respect it exactly, you know. Uh, but, I mean, I, I do the best I can. <clears throat> That's what I'm telling you. And uh, I, uh, I called my friend, like, last week. I have a Jehovah's Witness friend. And... Um, what and his name is John. He's a he's a nice guy. He has helped me, and he's helped me a lot. Uh, he's helped me by coming over and helping me with my car and things like that, uh, and giving me a ride. One time he took me to work. Uh, just he's been a good guy. <clears throat> but today we really got down to brass tacks, and um, he um, toucheed my touche. And um, it looks like that's going to be it for the Jehovah's Witnesses and um, my, um, my endeavor into 
trying to understand these people. Um, because, I mean, like, I'm getting to the point. Let's make something clear. All right? And I, I know a lot of people get mad at me because you're not me. Now, who is like me? Chris Green. Chris Green is like me. He's a little younger than me. He's 40 years old or 38 years old. And he is smart. He was an ex, according to him, he was an ex-Wall Street um, uh, barker. Uh, you know what I mean? Like just, uh, you know, uh, selling people stocks and this and that. So uh, he knows. He knows that the best way to make people blinded is to tell them a lie and to get them to believe the lie. And then anyone that comes up with an, an idea that is contrary to their great idea or their wonderful, perfect, idealistic way, then you are wrong and they will tell you. And it's bald face lies. And it's just like that. And that's how you people are. 99.99% .99 of you. And it only requires a little bit. If you believed in the scam, you will be like my ex-friend, who I'm sorry I can't be friends with anymore, but it's so mentally retarded that I can't deal with it anymore. And, and, and that man tried to help me. He did, I will admit, and he did. He did help me. He bought me tires for my other car. And that was no minor thing. Uh, it wasn't. And <coughs> I swear to you, the only person I have ever met, like my ex-friend, you know, uh, MJ there, is my sister Melanie. Uh, hence the reason why I don't have any family. Because my sisters are all cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, if you know what I mean. And um, like the one sister I had when I was working at the airport... I saw my sister. I saw one of my older sisters. She's my half sister. And um, I always considered her like my full sister. I never really, you know, like that's how you are when you're young. But there was a big difference. And, um, you know, even our babysitter who I hated, Mrs. King, she was a black maid that we had. And she worked for almost nothing. Uh, my mom was that poor. And, uh, she had a nice house and wound up losing it through the whole thing. We won't get into it. But uh, she uh, saw a guy that uh, tickled her fancy and wound up moving up to the bowels of Maine when she had a beautiful English Tudor house. Uh, she could not resist the carnal desires that she had for this uh, country bumpkin uh, who made it, it just ridiculous. You know, like uh, we won't get into it because I don't want any trouble. OK, but believe me. Um, she regretted it as soon as we went up there. We nearly froze to death. Maine is cold, folks. And we were in northern Maine. And uh, it is what you might call freezing cold. And uh, it was unbelievable. We finally moved back down to Connecticut and I had whooping cough. And um, I think it was just really hard there. It was just really, really a nightmare. But anyways... <clears throat> Uh, the only thing I'll say about my friend MJ is that he's focusing on the wrong things, in my opinion. He's focusing on the wrong things. Every time I had made contact with that man, he was talking about renting a ZR6 or the, um, um, the FJ26 series with the paddle shifters, the whole nine yards. And it never stopped with him. The last time I saw him, for the most part, um, he was renting something. I thought he was renting a, 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 a Corvette. So he didn't. He rented some kind of hot shoe car, which he made sure that he under, that I understood that it was 143000 if you could get one. And this is how my ex-friend is operating, and it never changes. And I, I just, I feel sorry for the man. I do. I'm not even really mad at him. Um, I, I really feel for him because I think all the man really wants is to have a good time. And he's got plenty of money and, you know, plenty of this and that. And, 
he's just, I guess he's not having any fun. And you, you need to know how to have fun. And I guess he just doesn't know how to have fun. And he just goes by the, um, whatever is the most expensive has to get you the most fun. So whatever he does, he does first class. I'm not going to take anything away from him. And the, and the reason why I'm interjecting my friend for the first time, and all of you know, I've never interjected anything because I've just kind of wiped the slate clean with my ex-friend because it's too retarded uh, to, to try to build on its mental retardation. And I'm not, I'm, I'm not trying to be mean to him. I feel for him because um, we had a problem. I had went to meet him and he went out and he actually was trying to be nice. And he went out and he got a, um, a, a, I don't know what it was, but it was some sort of like, what you know these places where you walk in and you pay $11 and you get a, a green milkshake, which is like filled with all kind of good things for you and broccoli and this and that, and it tastes really good and everything. And that's what he tried to do. He tried to act. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got long scam. Anyways, um, you know, he's trying to be a nice guy is what he was doing. And unfortunately, um, on a straw, you uh, what they do in order to make it sanitary is when they serve you a milkshake or whatever this thing was, it was green. That's all I know. <clears throat> it matched my car rather well uh, after he threw it uh, onto my uh, car, uh, almost breaking my windshield. Uh, and he nearly, um, a quote, punched me out. And he's six foot eight on a... Uh, uh, on a, uh, uh, a challenging day. He could be 6'9". And uh, I, what can I do? There's two hits, him hitting me and me in the floor. I, th there's nothing hard about this. But um, he uh, brought me the milkshake and he goes, here, it was $8. And I, I said, great, you know, thanks. And um, wind will be wind. And I took it and I had it in my hand and the straw had a little top on it. You know how they, to be sanitary, it has the top of the um, <clears throat> the straw, the the paper. And I got it and I went like this and I guess I got it like this and I and the wind um, a puff of wind blew the straw off and unfortunately uh, we were on his home turf and his acre and a half property or whatever it is, three acres six acres, whatever it is um, it um, floated rather sinisterly out of the window and down on the ground. And he very quickly reminded me that um, he kept care. He kept his place clean and he did not appreciate the top of the straw. And he reminded me for my benefit. Come on, man. I mean, you know, uh, you know, come on. You can't just do that. And what I did was I took this and I shouldn't have done it to be fair. But again, this is part of the world that I have to explain to you. And a lot of you eggheads are so goddamn dumb that you don't understand anything. So of course, the right thing to do is to take the goddamn thing and throw it, throw it out the goddamn window. And that's ex my car window. It's exactly what I did. Why? Because I don't need to be reminded of a little tiny little thing of a straw going onto his magnificent. Um, and what he needs, honestly, is uh, he needs serfs. I, and I'm sorry to say this. If I mean, that man has been born out of time because he needs to be in a castle and have some serfs. That, that's exactly what my ex-friend needs. And he would really be uh, living high off the hog. Not that he's not already. The problem is, is that his personality is such that it's like an OCD and, and no one can fit in and do anything good enough for my friend MJ. Nothing can be done well enough. Sorry, folks. And, um, uh, I, it's, you know, like, I would like to try to work it out with my friend. 
my ex friend. And I really would because he really tried to help me. But he's so twisted and messed up in his mind. And he just needs to take a step down one way or another. Because when you're to the point where a little tiny straw paper flutters on your um, domain there that you own, your four acres, that's spotless. I will grant you that. There's something wrong with your brain. You are either on severe drugs and not just a... Nuna takes the edge off. I'm not talking about that. Okay? I'm talking about serious drugs. That's what I'm talking about. That behavior cannot be organic. If it is, my friend's in deep trouble. If that's organic, I pray that he is on drugs. I pray. Because if that's organic, uh, we are going to have to, or somebody will have to, and we won't get into his life because, it's not, you know what I mean? We won't get into it, but he has challenges as well. Uh, and it has to do with other humans. And we won't go any further on that. But if I was to try to work it out with my friend, what I could do is we could pick up where we left off. And this time I could get a, a, a straw with that much of the paper and then just kind of like for therapy, we would put that off and let him see that miring and mucking up, mucking up his beautiful, um, you know, uh, castle. You know, every man's home is his castle. And if he could make it through that trauma, then we might be able to get to, you know, like maybe him finding out how many times I, I changed my t-shirt in a week, something like that. And we could start moving along. But unfortunately, regardless of my slovenliness, the man has serious, serious mental issues that he needs to work on. That's my opinion. And I've never talked about it since it's been like uh, shit. I mean, it's been like fucking three months. I mean, it's been a while. It's been like two and a half months now. I don't know when it was, like two and a half months. You know, maybe more. I don't know. Something like that. Two months, whatever it is. So it's too mentally retarded to be able to try to get a little bit bigger part of the straw and then see if we can get him to um, accept all that trauma or whatever. I mean, that's how bad this is. And the problem is with me, when you're dealing with me, you have no idea what you're dealing with. I mean, folks, underwear, you can get a couple of extra days out of your underwear by turning them inside out. You know, your briefs. I mean, everybody knows this that's worth their salt. You understand their weight and salt. I'm not going to hold back today. Now, my one thing I'm going to say about my, my ex-friend there is... I should have known because, you know, when I was hanging out with him, um, he had some guy call him and it was, I don't know if it was a business associate or whether it was one of his friends, but, um, and you know, he probably has friends that are not living high off the hog, but they're relatively stable, I would say. And, you know, I'm sitting there kind of not on purpose, but I mean, I just happened to be with him. And all I heard him say is something about, about how he's kind of fielding his friend's problem because his friend there, uh, he's, I'm sure it was a guy, uh, was explaining to my friend that he had long scam. And uh, he didn't know exactly what to do about it. And I was so saddened because I, I, I was expecting because I sat with my ex-friend uh, three and a half years ago or three years ago, whatever it is, a little bit more than three years ago, when scam was scamming and they were closing the places because of scam, because of people needing to make a lot of money and control your mind. That's what that was all about. I know your fuck shit retards. Even my subs don't fully understand that. That's why if you consider me a God 
then you'll be so smart, folks, because you will learn and take in what I can give you by osmosis and by what I can give you uh, just by my aura. And I'm sitting there and I'm saying to myself, and, you know, he was a big scam believer because he made hundreds of thousands of dollars off scam. So how could you hope that he didn't believe in scam when he was profiting from scam in mega ways? And he told me so much. And he said, look, you'd do it, too, if, if, if you had a chance to do it. And I said, I'm sorry, MJ. I wouldn't do it because I know what this is going to lead to. You won't be able to go to your um, uh, your uh, skateboard finals, uh, you know, with the, uh, you know what I mean, uh, electric, uh, electric skateboard uh, championship racing or whatever it is. It, it just, it never ends. It's, it's always something, okay? So, and he just wants to have fun, but he just can't. He just can't have any fun. That's the problem what it is. He's trying. He's doing his best, but doesn't seem to work. At least that's what I picked up on. So he's on this phone call, and I'm, I, you know, I wanted to, like, tug at his shirt like this, and I wanted to say something. And I wanted to give my friend dignity. I, you know, my ex-friend. I wanted to give him dignity. And I wanted him to shine like gold, but he couldn't, and he failed. He dropped the ball, and he got off the phone, and I, I didn't bother talking about it because it's none of my business, but I went, you know, now I'm telling you, so if he listens to this or one of his friends, they probably listen. When somebody comes to you who's a grown man, and they start telling you about their suffering from long scam. What my friend, my ex-friend should have said is, listen, Mark, listen to me, or whatever his name is. I let you talk to me, right? I mean, have I ever not let you hang around me and, like, I answer your calls, right? I mean, I, I never push you away. I allow you to hang with me, right? I can show you how to scan my, my card and it, it, you don't have to scan your card. You just take your phone and everything is paid for. I mean, I let you hang out with me, right? I let you be a part of my magnificence. And you come here and tell me on the phone that you're suffering from a long scam. I don't want to hear another call like this. You understand? Because the next time, I'm not going to be nice to you. I want you to take off your diaper. I want you to wipe your ass clean. And I want you to stop making your own scam conditions. Because, yes, it can happen the same way that... Uh, and anybody that knows what I'm talking about knows what I'm talking about. When you're really hungry and you're starving, folks, I promise you, a great deal of it is mind over matter. And I'm going to tell you something right now. You go into the woods and you sit down and you make some stew or whatever it is that you do and you're camping and you hear rustling of the weeds or the whatever over there and you hear some voices and they don't sound friendly. I promise you, you won't want to eat. And I know that's metabolic, but it's also mental. And it's part of metabolic. So I, how could I tell him that? Because he wouldn't understand and he'd immediately want to go and rent a Z78 uh, uh, modified uh, Plymouth, uh, you know, that, whatever it is. So this deals with what happened today. When you're dealing with me, it's a hairpin trigger because most people don't think that anyone could function with the level of slovenliness that I extrude from my person or my things. That is the simple truth. And sadly, 
in February of 2024. That is life for me, unfortunately. I have a wife and I have a kid and I have to support them. And I do not have a great job. I used to cut yards. But um, my, my ex-friend there hired out a whole lot of people that aren't looking like you and I. And I won't say any more about it. And he benefited. I just didn't. And I wouldn't. And like that's just the way I am because I have some dignity. And I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to destroy my own country by doing that and benefiting and profiting from it. Not everybody is like me. Okay. A lot of you are already turned off already. Go back and wait for the shit to happen because eventually this shit is going to fucking make everybody suffer and you're going to be suffering and you're going to suffer severely. That's what's going to happen. That's the warning from old Paul. Something is going to happen. And unless you are very well healed, like my ex-friend, you are not going to be able to make it. You are going to start having real problems like you've never had before. Because that's what's happening now. People are too dim-witted and stupid to understand one thing from another. So, um, last week I had arranged with my Jehovah Witness friends, which, by the way, is my last surviving friend, I must tell you, because my ex-friend MJ has now moved on to the... Um, uh, what, what will it be now? The skimboarding um, uh, championship in uh, Honolulu with his uh, $2,800 a night hotel room, which was a good deal because normally it's 7600 a night. We won't get into it. All right. We won't get into it. So, um, sorry, folks. I've got a big trailer here going by next to me and it's... Uh, crazy. Anyways. Um, so, uh, I went over, uh, to my Jehovah's witness friends for my necessary religious training. And, um, I haven't been able to go to their kingdom hall, which I like, I like going to the kingdom hall because the people are soft people. They're not only soft folks, but let me tell you something about the Jehovah's witnesses. Um, to say that they're pacifists is not accurate um, because the Jehovah Witnesses do not fight in wars. They do. I mean, once in a while you'll see a Mormon, but Jehovah Witnesses are not Mormons. They are even more um, eccentric. And what they do is they simply refuse to do anything except possibly defend themselves in the most um, pacifistic ways. That's what they are. They're not allowed to do anything except pursue this idea, and yet uh, of complete docile being. That's what they do, with the exception, I guess, that they eat meat, right? But it's like ridiculous folks. Uh, I mean, these folks... They don't want you to watch the news. They don't want you having any opinion. Uh, yeah, when blacks were being persecuted in the 60s, they had no opinion on it. And they weren't allowed to have an opinion. That's not what you do. And Russia has learned how to deal with the Jehovah's Witnesses. And that is, they simply either, uh, you know that little switch when you want to turn on your light and then you do something to want to you know, when it's too, too much light, you do something to make it more darker. Well, that's kind of what they do to them. And uh, it's one way or another and to a certain degree. Why? Because their communist philosophy is not going to allow the takeover, the complete and total takeover of a person's personality and metabolic functioning. And that's what happens with the Jehovah's Witnesses. I'm sorry to say, the only thing that the Jehovah's Witnesses want to do is be with other Jehovah's Witnesses. That's the only thing. And yet, I liked it. When I went there, I liked it. You get to listen to the Bible stories and so forth. And so on. But many of them were showing the vengeance of the God. And then, uh, uh, 
the, the God there um, uh, d asks a couple of men to carry something. Or the um, what do you call that thing that that uh, uh, the um, I forgot now. It's that thing that was fiery and they carried it. I forgot now, but it's famous. It's used as a euphemism all the time. The, the Grail, Holy Grail, or whatever it is, and um, you know. Uh, uh, the Lord told them to carry it, and they they saw that they were going on an angle or something, and um, this thing started to slip to the right, so they corrected for it, and they were killed immediately because the idea was to not do what you think is right. The idea is to do what your God tells you to do, and you don't question anything. Folks, it's all an elaborate fucking mind game. So, uh, and I knew this. It's not like I didn't know this, but I don't have much help these days, particularly with my straw adventures with my ex-friend. You understand? There are straw issues, and that was kind of like the last straw. Uh, by the way, when I dropped the straw, uh, he reared back to punch me. And I mean really reached back. How dare you put a milkshake on his property? That would now, fortunately, it didn't uh, spill. But then he picked it up and threw it as hard as he could at my windshield, and I can't believe it didn't break. And this man is this far away from going uh, to the big house. If other things start to come about. It could get very nasty. And yet he doesn't seem to understand that because of his mental retardation. I don't know what other way to say it. I mean, that could have went very badly for my ex-friend there. Could have went really bad. Could have went really badly for me too. So in hindsight, I shouldn't have done that to him. I shouldn't have thrown the damn thing out. But I just didn't know what else to do when a little top of the wrapper of the straw went on to his magnificent um, property and uh, soiled his property. It's unbelievable. Now, generally speaking, things like this tend to come back and bite you in the ass. That's over a period of a lifetime. You don't get away with that. So that's all I got to say about that. And I've never spoken about this uh, since the day. And we've never said boo to each other since that day. No texts, no calls, no patching things up. There's no way to patch it up. Like I said, we'd have to move to a longer length of straw that would fall on his property and see if he could deal with the trauma. It's so fucked up, folks, that I'm beginning to really question the sanity. I mean, I know everybody does this from every generation. They say everybody's fucked up. But I, I mean, like, I'm looking at people, and I'll give you another example today. I, I'm going through a light, but I didn't go through a light straight. I turned at a light, I turned to the left. And, and it's not a major thing. It's only a one lane road, right? This, this place called, um, this place called, um, um, it's out in Davie, right? And I went to, I, the light changed, and to green and I kind of snuck in there and went through and made a left hand turn the person that was there was the same person that stopped me the last time I did that and it was I mean it's like a minor thing but the problem is it starts with the it gets into the genes the personality genes of the person and you just don't do that to them it's, it's not, it doesn't matter if it was like a second or two seconds or it didn't affect. That's not what you do to them. They know that that can't be. That is a non sequitur. Must not allow. So this fucking imbecile, uh, when I was trying to make a left-hand turn, he actually pulled forward and went to his right, which, which made it so that I couldn't get through. He blocked off the road. Now, this time he was a little bit tardy. And he couldn't quite get it. And he was snubbed. So what he did was he took the first gear and he absolutely spun his tires out as quickly as possible in order to be able to smash into my car at least 
to the backside of my car in order to be able to show how big his penis is or something along that line. Folks, we are talking about a situation right now that the people are so goddamn stupid that I can't even, and fucked up, not just stupid, but really twisted. I'm sorry to say. And they're going to wind up, and we may go with them, unfortunately. They may wind up facing the music, I'm sorry to say, because something is wrong. So in finishing this long, circuitous story of mine, um, I've been arranging since last week uh, to go to my friend, take everything out of the car, and, and mount some things. Uh, you know, like I put this thing up here, this, uh, this uh, net and so forth, things that will help me because of my situation right now. And, um, yeah, he, and John was very nice and he said, sure. And I said, um, let's go to the kingdom hall, uh, because he, uh, gave me some necessary religious instruction on Friday and, uh, last Friday. And I was supposed to work uh, at uh, a place that I work that's not far from where I stay. And uh, I had been working since Wednesday, so I was on Wednesday till Sunday. And my boss said, he came over, my boss, uh, I'm worried for my boss because my I didn't even recognize him. He's just above skin and bones. I couldn't believe it. That man lost so much weight. And I asked him, I said, what happened? I don't even recognize you. You lost, and he's a fairly tall man, so he looks even slimmer. And, um, you know, he said, I've got high blood pressure. And I said, I understand. I said, I dig it. I understand. I said, it's probably a really good idea to walk. And I mean, walk like I did this morning, seven, seven and a half miles. I walked for three hours this morning. I might've done eight miles and it was cold. I started when it was dark, but I'm willing to do that. Instead of going on what they want to prescribe to you, I don't want it. And I know that's risky, but that's just me. A lot of people don't care. They'll brag about it, that they'll go on to that stuff. So from what I understand, it just kind of zones you out. And actually, my ex-friend was on it at some point. He told me, and I I, I was surprised. I didn't know that he was um, had a, you know the, the high blood pressure, and I have it too. And I know what you have to do. You have to walk, folks. And that means you need to walk in the morning and you need to walk in the evening if possible. Or sometime during the day. I mean, that's just cut and dried, folks. That's just cut and dried. And, uh, you know, I want to call my boss and say, look, I walked seven miles today. Did you get out and you, you do anything? But he's not. I know him. He's not going to do it. And he's going to, they're going to increase his dosage of that, whatever the fuck that is. And just like my good friend, the Jehovah's Witness, uh, John, they boosted him up. And God almighty, his, he's got all sorts of health problems. I mean, he handles it pretty well, but his feet swell up and all sorts of things. He's been on that shit for fucking 40 years, 40, probably 40 years. And it's amazing what the human body can withstand for so long. And they, um, they upped his dose not long ago, six months ago, five months ago, whatever it was. So I was trying to get to this kingdom hall on Saturday, and I had a plan to go Saturday morning because I didn't go in until uh, 3 o'clock or 2, 2 or 3, what, 3 o'clock. Well, he changed my schedule, and he sent me up to bumfucked Egypt. And I mean bumfucked Egypt. So I went ahead, and I had to do that. And I couldn't make it to the Jehovah's Witness uh, Kingdom Hall. And I wouldn't mind going, honestly. And when they help me, I feel like it's it's a it's a fair trade. And I, I, I like the people there. They're all right. It's just that all they want to do is see other Jehovah's Witnesses and do whatever job that they do. That's all they do, as far as I can tell. Uh, so uh, maybe a little bit more. Maybe you can have a, a picnic or something like that. It's about as racy as it will get, okay? We won't get into it. Um, so I, I, you know, I want to show them that I'm really trying and unfortunately they just do not understand that I do not have a 
$285,000 house. I, I, I don't have it. I don't have a, a $1,175 a month efficiency. I, I, I don't have that stuff. And I don't know how to go about telling them that. And I'm at the mercy of what I can do. I'm at the mercy. I'm at the mercy of what I can do. So, unfortunately, what the woman did, the wife of my of this guy, John, my Jehovah's Witness friend, who I shan't see anymore, is, folks, I had a lot of stuff that I took out of here because I had bought things like for my family, like, you know, a jelly that I was going to send and this and canned food and this and that and the other thing. And I just can't run 35 miles down to Miami every morning to go do this. And I can't, I'm at the point where I cannot afford to make any more uh, stuff, uh, uh, expenses. I can't do it. So you have to roll with what you have. That's the best thing I can tell you. That's the only way I know of how to do it because I'm out of ideas, frankly. So uh, I had told him, I said, look, and I helped him fix his screen uh, and the guy's smart. He's smart in the way that um, we, he had a screen on his uh, door, screen door on a, you know, his back uh, porch, and I helped him fix it. And he told me that the crazy glue, super glue, wouldn't work. And I knew it would work. I knew it. And the problem was is that the line was right here, and the screen came down to about right there where it just barely touched it right there. It just barely touched it. And there was nothing to bite into to put that molding on there. I said, we can still do it. You have to use the thick gel crazy glue, not regular crazy glue. That's not thick enough. He didn't believe me. Well, we did it. And I told him it's going to take like three or four days to fix it because we'll have to do a little bit. A little bit will stick and the other shit will be all fucking loose. But you just got to do it a little bit at a time. And that's what we did. That's what I did. And it actually stuck a little bit there within like 20 minutes of what we were working. But he saw that it worked. But then uh, he went out and he, he, he got some molding or something, some flat molding. And he actually did a smart thing. He put the molding on uh, to go up like a little flange that went up so that it would be easier uh, for the screen to stick. And, and he did. It was a pretty smart idea. I was impressed. Uh, we didn't need it. We could have done it without it. But he went through this whole thing and mounted a couple screws in there and mounted these. But it helped because it kind of gave a little bit of bite to put the screen into and then glue. So I solved this problem for him, which I was happy to do. He's helped me many times. And um, I wound up uh, going this morning because I told him last night. I said, look, I need to come over and I need to get started. I have to get the other net. I have a net here now, um, and I can put one there into the back, uh, which I am going to do, and I need to do that, and I need to get the other things done here so that at least I have a chance, okay, where I find one shoe, and then I, I'm late for work, that kind of stuff, and I mean, that's what's going on, and I just can't help it because I'm at the point where I can't do any more right now, so... Um, I talked to him last night and he said, come over. And I guess his wife was going to leave all the better because, you know, women aren't going to be involved, in, you know, in seeing stuff coming out of my car. I didn't want that, but she left. So um, I wound up getting everything out of the car and everything that you see here in this car. Uh, and I did not have the boxes. So those were all uh, those are all canned goods like uh, canned tomatoes, canned chili, canned corn, all that. And there was just, it, it was just amazing how much came out of my car, truthfully, uh, with this little bug. Uh, it's just ridiculous. And the good news is, I swear to you on my life, I have never seen a roach in this car. I've never seen it since I've gotten it. And I can't believe it because I cook and I do stuff like that. I can't believe it. That other car that I had, uh, when I bought that car... I went into the back pocket of the seat 
and there was a cheeseburger. And you know those uh, McDonald's cheeseburgers last for years. I ain't kidding. They have so much preservatives in them that they kind of look like they did. They just don't go bad. I mean, they go bad, but they kind of stay the same. That's for real, too. They've done studies on that. I'm not saying you could eat it. I'm saying that it kind of keeps its form. So that other car was fucked up. It was bad. This I've still never seen one roach, and I've spilled food in here, right? So um, I went to my friend. All the stuff now is as neat as I could put it on the side, out of the side of the neighbor's on his carport there and neighbors couldn't see it i made sure it was on the so she came in and um she was not happy i'll put it to you that way she was not happy um and then uh, you know one thing led to another she went in and then she came back out and she lost my friendship and i'm going to explain to you now and i'm going to cut this video here in a very shortly i'm going to tell you why this was so bad um, she came back out because it was an eyesore for her and she just couldn't deal with it. Much like my ex-friend MJ, where the little piece of paper, the straw tip, set him off. Because it reduced the magnificence of his perfectly run property. So he has to find other people to befriend him that won't um, uh, dirty up his property. Uh, again, it was on home turf, his home turf, I grant you. So um, it's disparaging. When you have somebody that has so much money, don't try to be friends with them if you don't have a level of equity because there's just nothing to it. This guy, I paid him 20 years ago. When I went to the Philippines, I paid him to cut a yard for me. You know what the truth was? He thought so much of me that uh, when I came back after 20 days, the yard still wasn't cut, and I had to go first yard and go to cut it. And when I went there, the yard was being cut by his men 21 days later. That's what you call disparity. If I did that to him, I would have never heard the end of it. That's why you cannot be friends with people who are very, very wealthy. You can't do it. Not unless, not unless you have some sort of parity or perceived parity, and I don't. So the woman came out and she said, uh, you know, wouldn't you be better off throwing that stuff away? And I, you know, I, I want to remain cordial. I want to remain cordial. I don't want to rock the boat or get into a fight with her because I know that this is yucky. This is all pretty yuck stuff, right? So she looked at me and she said, are you a hoarder? Now, before you folks continue on, because I'm not, I know a lot of you are dim-witted, really dim-witted, but let me tell you something about hoarders. Hoarder, hoarding. I lived with a hoarder. Uh, Charlotte, my dead ex-roommate, was probably one of the worst hoarders, possibly, in Broward County, it may even have taken Miami-Dade with it. I had never seen, and I've watched Hoarders on TV. That woman had the game down. And I will tell you that one of the saddest things you could ever suffer from, high blood pressure, mental retardation, whatever it is, or... Uh, bipolar, whatever it is that you have, or, you, you know, like, um, you know, Mongol, whatever it is, probably a Coke addiction, a sugar addiction, food addiction, whatever it is, probably the worst thing I have ever seen in my life that I lived through in spades. I was the one who had to clean it up and had rashes all over my arms from that shit. It was unreal. The most debilitating thing in this world to overcome is a person with a hoarding situation. They are impossible to help. They oftentimes are fairly intelligent, if not highly intelligent, but they're never really, really intelligent. You might think so, but they never are. 
because they can't understand the basis of judging reality. They don't have, like, they can climb over a mountain of things to go to work when they have a house. They, they pile it right to the top, and if they have to shimmy through, they'll shimmy through and then go to work. I mean, I'll never forget that one episode of Hoarders where the guy actually met a girl and he didn't tell her about the fact that he was a hoarder and his house was completely fucking fucked. And then he decided to break it to her and the girl came over and she was just like, <gasps> and it was a pretty girl. You know what I mean? It was like a fairly pretty girl and she just couldn't make heads or tails out of it. You know, so, but these people are often doing it themselves. They're doing it, them. they're creating it themselves. They're never really highly intelligent. Charlotte was pretty good in English, uh, much higher than me. She knew what a pregnant parsipical was and so forth and so on. And, you know, what words to use. And it's not hung, it's hanged and all the rest of it. All right. Uh, and it was horrendous. I know exactly how she was. And for this woman to ask me if I was a hoarder is about the most lowest, um, rudest, uh, showing the least amount of respect that you could ever have for a person. Because that's something that is so sick when you're a hoarder. And I mean it. I've had personal experience with this. Even my egghead ex-friend knows this. He went in the house because I had to cut her trees and he went in there and cut the trees and did a good job, frankly. And I think the woman paid him $1,800. And I mean, that was just one aspect of it. So he knows what I'm talking. He knows what I speak of, if he's listening. So for her to say that, was taking away any dignity that I had is gone. And like I told you, I should be at this point, I should be saying, oh man, I want to end it. You know, I'm a terrible person. And how could I live like this and all this? But I'll tell you something. I gave further thought to this today because I tried today. I tried to get everything together. I tried to get some boxes and get things together and try to get myself in some sort of shape. And that's what I tried to do today. But when I got everything unpiled, the woman came back home, John's wife, the Jehovah's Witness came back and she just couldn't tolerate it. I don't blame her. I don't blame her. But there's a point of dignity for yourself when you lose all dignity and I can't talk to them anymore. They are now, it now ceases that I can make any contact with them, much like my egghead ex-friend. Because my egghead ex-friend will not be able to understand how to possibly grow as a person by having a straw twice as big, the paper come off, and then dealing with it. You understand, folks? This is the kind of mental retardation we're talking about. And now, as this 73-year-old woman or 71-year-old woman who has cancer, by the way, and um, I've only treated her with respect with the exception of, of course, what I can't help. So I can't dress real snazzy. So I've done everything that I can to show her proper respect. It's her house after all. When we're in service or whatever, uh, same. I always try to uh, treat them with respect. The last word that that woman said to me today was, do you want some soup? And my exact words to her is, I'll pass. Because the previous words to that were, are you a hoarder? Well, I have a question for her. And I won't say it to her because, again, you're not a god. I'm a god, not you. You understand? Most of you would fucking die if you had to fucking face what I face on a daily, hourly, and minutely, and secondly uh, manner. You'd be fucking dead. You'd be fucking put in a fucking straight jacket. I ain't kidding neither. They wouldn't understand, much like my egghead ex-friend. That woman... All 70 years old for her, cancer-stricken as she is, 
is probably in part, at least, for the fact that she has overeaten and been not as active as she should be and probably wound up getting cancer. That, that's not to say for sure, but I would say there's a fair chance of that. That's what happens when you don't take care of yourself. Now, would I ever say that to her? Of course not, because you know that I'm a god. And if I wouldn't say that to her because that's not respectful. But I could say it to her now. I'd say, how are you feeling? You have cancer, but yet you brought your cancer on yourself because you have a body that you've just let go. And you didn't care about yourself, so you, you have cancer now, and you didn't take care of yourself. So what am I supposed to say? Do you think I would say that to her? No, because I'm a god. You understand? But because she's brain damaged, what, sh what should she have done? She should have said, hey, um, don't do this again. I mean, go ahead and finish out what you're doing or whatever it is. John will help you, her husband. He'll help you. Don't do this again, okay? It's like it doesn't look good. I got it. But that's not what she said. She said, are you a hoarder? Okay. Are you, from your slovenly, lazy um, way that you live, did you bring the cancer on yourself to a degree? I think it may be. Again, would I say it to her? No. But that's because I wouldn't say anything like that because I'm a human being and I wouldn't do something like that. That's hitting below the belt. And what she did the last words next to the last words that she ever left off with me was asking me if I was a hoarder. And that's what she will live with now, much like egghead ex friend of mine who can contemplate uh, the, the, the wrapper, the top of the wrapper straw coming off on his magnificent property. Folks, we are talking about people now who are so fucked up in their heads that they make me look like I am a living God. And that's all I have to say for you. I will be back for the news. Remember, this is the new, new and improved New World Order channel. And this has been a lesson in psychology that you'll benefit from. Take care, subscribe, and be nobody, and I will talk to you later. And my wife actually is on the other line listening to all this horse featherish kind of stuff. Right, Myla? Yeah. Right. So she's actually listening to this, and she's uh, a captive audience. She supports me because she knows that if she doesn't support my point of view and calls me a pig, she won't get any money. So she's in my corner, a captive uh, member of the team here. Anyways, folks, folks, take care, and I will be back with the news very shortly. Goodbye.